for about six months, this was a potentially nice looking but useless project. Intended as a direct conversion HF transceiver, it had problems which caused me not to make much progress on it for all that time. The issue was insufficient usable audio gain. Or more precisely, when you turn the volume control up, the thing would oscillate. As I was using a battery, it couldn't be power supply related. The problem had to be something from within this circuit. I took the circuit straight out of the MDT transceiver manual. The MDT, in case you're not familiar with it, is an Australian developed double sideband transceiver kit. I've had great results with it, as have many people around the world. Therefore, if you're to build the amplifier circuit correctly, it should work first time. The only problem is that mine didn't. It required a fair amount of debugging to find out where all the problems were and to get the circuit operating satisfactorily. This video is how I found the faults and there are several of them, despite it being such a simple circuit. It could be useful if you're also having problems with your LM386 audio amplifier. There is a variety of LM386 circuits you see on the web. Many of them have fewer parts than this. They might have worked for the builder in their configuration, but if you go to build it, then you might have oscillation and other instability problems. The important components that are used to tame the LM386 include the capacitor resistor network across from pin 5 to ground, a capacitor from pin 7 to ground, a capacitor about 10 nanofarads from pin 3, or the audio input to ground, a resistor in the audio input line, in this case 4.7k going to the wiper of the volume control, and also, and very importantly, a large value capacitor from pin 6, which is the power supply input, down to ground. You might also have a low value resistor of around 10 ohms to the supply rail. All those parts should add stability to an LM386 audio amplifier. But as I mentioned before, that wasn't enough for my build of it. So why did I still have problems, despite building a sound circuit that didn't skimp on all the extra parts? The haywire style of construction probably didn't help, though I've built other circuits like this and they've been stable enough. I should mention I built this stage from salvage components. Some of these parts may be 10 or 20 years old and not all will necessarily be good. That's significant as you'll hear later in the video. I went around the various components, putting other parts in parallel and seeing if there is any change to the characteristics of the oscillation. If it got worse or better, that might indicate that that's part of the circuit that you need to pay a bit more attention to. I first of all disconnected the parts across pins 1 and 8. That of course made the gain lower, it meant I could turn the volume almost up to maximum and there wouldn't be any oscillation. But that was completely meaningless because I did need the extra gain that the circuit would have provided with those two parts in the circuit. I found accidentally that the 10 microfarad capacitor here was not connected to ground. That helped a little bit but not very much. Then I tried another capacitor between pin 6, which is the supply rail and the ground, and that helped. I think what had happened was the capacitor I put in was defective, so I ripped that out and put in a substitute capacitor. I fiddled around with the values for the 10 nanofarad. That was very close already to pin 3, so it wasn't an issue with the lead being too long. I tried 100 nanofarad and I think that made the audio a bit bassier, but it still didn't stop the oscillation problem, so I put it back to 10. The resistor value of 4.7K, I tried a higher value resistor, but that didn't really stop the problem, and besides, that is already an appropriate value for this part of the circuit. When I put another capacitor here, that made a further small improvement. The reason for that was not because of the change capacitor value, but because a particular capacitor 
was obviously defective. A lot of cases where capacitors might be marginal, they might sort of work but not completely and that can be enough to cause things to oscillate. Something else that can help in situations like this is to improve the decoupling. Here we've got a 10 ohm resistor and 100 microfarad to earth. Now if we were to add another say 10 ohm resistor, the supply rail is over here, and another capacitor, again it can be 100 microfarad, it could be 220, 470, doesn't matter so much. This is the wire from the earth, this is one end of the decoupling capacitor, connect it and the oscillation goes away. The tighter supply rail, better decoupling and better isolation between the LM386 stage and previous stages. That made all the difference. There's a couple of lessons out of this. You might seek to reproduce a circuit, but through no fault of the diagram or the designer, it might not work for you. Don't overlook the possibility of faulty components, especially if they're salvaged. Also, don't be afraid of adding extra decoupling or shielding. That's particularly important for high gain circuits, because the more the gain, the more the possibility of oscillation, feedback and difficulties in taming the beast. Now to fix all the other problems this project has.